When it comes to Royal Ascot, the, the world's eyes are very much on you here. How do you deal with that in terms of making sure that everything is you know, in place and right for you know, a major festival? Well, planning really. Planning and, uh, and with the help of a great team, to be honest. I mean, we, we, everything is worked back from the, the major meetings. So for Royal Ascot, we'll have been planning that from, from virtually the last Royal Ascot, to be honest. Sounds a bit of a cliche, but that's what happened. So, so our year is worked out really around making sure that we provide the best racing surface for that, for those five days. So, you know, key kind of turf works, um, key, key turf techniques, all of our feeding programs, wetting agents, anything we do with the with the verted drain or or, or or anything like that is all is all work, geared back from 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 that week in June. So, uh, you know, we, we we take a lot of planning, we we, we make a lot of records, um, and so that we can consistently kind of deliver what we want to. But uh, yeah, you can't do it without a good team, and um, and, and they're very good here. So in the weeks running up to Royal Ascot, Chris, is there anything different you're doing or is, is it really depend on circumstances? Depends on the weather, to be honest, yeah. Uh, so so uh, as I say, you know, our, our, you know we, we will, we will vertebrate drain twice in May generally to make sure that, um, that, 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 that the track is free from compaction and as even as across the width as possible, um, so it's a consistent surface. Uh, that, that will then enable uh, the, the, the rain to take heavy period the, the track to take heavy periods of rain so if we have last year we had i think we had something like 100 millimeters of, of, of rainfall in june um you know huge amounts of rainfall before we you know before we started the meeting but the track coped fairly well yes it was a soft surface but it had drained the water was getting away uh, uh and, it, and it didn't ride considerably soft considering that weather so um you know if we hadn't done those two vertebrae drain passes that may have it may have been a very different story but it drained well you know that again. If it's a dry year and you've done those, you might have to water a bit more. But you know you're going to get good root structure. You know that you know that the, 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 the moisture going to be drawn up from, from 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 beneath. And as long as you manage to to, to to know what you're doing in the build up to the meeting, you should be able to deliver a decent track. So it's the planning of it in advance and just attention to detail. I suppose is the key things. One of the things we've been talking about off camera is irrigation, and I think you're pretty much self-sufficient here on on water. Can you give us a little bit of background to that. Yeah, sure. We uh, when the redevelopment. Um, was underway in uh, in 2005. We built reservoirs. There was already one small but reservoir here. We then had built another reservoir in the centre of the course. We harvest the water that we collect from the steppings on the grandstand and from the underpasses uh, where the where the roads go underneath the track. Uh, so we harvest that water, uh, and that gets stored in the middle, and then we use that to uh, to pump out around the track. We've got pop-ups all the way around the course, and we've got uh, Briggs machines as well. So we've got uh, we've got two, um, two 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 ways of watering. So that is no longer a big cost item for you, I guess, because of that. Um, what are the big cost items here for you, Neil? Um, outside of labour, I suppose, really, you know, fertilisers, a big cost. You know, this is essentially a sand track, the, 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 the new straight course. That, uses, that requires a lot of feeding. Uh, we embarked on a biological programme a couple of years ago. Um, and that, you know, that, 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 that has not been cheap, but it's still, we're very pleased with, with the way it's going. You, you mentioned the biological program there. That, that's really something that's, that's quite interesting to me. Um, not only is it greener and better, which is good news for, for everybody, and I'm sure it's something that the, you know, the company wants to be seen to be doing, but it's actually had some financial benefits as well and will do in the long term, because I think you're, the, the amount of fungicide that you're um, using now is far less than it ever has been before. Is that correct? Yeah, it has, yeah. I think before the year before we used the, um, the used a biological product, we... Uh, we had to spray about five or six times um, with the fungicide, maybe a touch more actually that year. And then the last two years, you've only had to spray once. So, and that can't have just been due, due, due to kind of climatic kind of conditions. Uh, we, you know, the biological um, products we've been using has helped have helped reduce thatch a little bit, and certainly helped us. Um, you know, certainly prevented or, 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 or not encouraged anyway. Um, you know, fungus in the in, in the sward. So. Yeah, no, that's been a cost saving. And your head groundsman here, Rion, he's been doing his own brew and you're about to apply that for the first time this year, I understand. Yeah, he has, yeah, he's been looking at, uh, yeah, yeah, and in, in, yeah, very good kind of new new kind of idea that they've been looking at is, um, you know, he's been working with the team on, uh, on on making their own compost to then make compost tea um, to do that. And we're using, you know, they're using their own products. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of trees and, and stuff on site so there's wood chips here there's grass clippings here they've you know they, they've used a lot of uh, local kind of materials to, to, to make their own compost and uh, yeah they're about to embark on their first tea okay well truly environmentally friendly that one then is recycling and 
everything going on in that particular mix-up so and a cost saving and you're pushing some boundaries which is always good to see absolutely you know i think it's great it's great you know and it, yeah uh, very encouraging of it and I, I you know hope it works we, we've yet to really test it to see what's actually in it and it, what's coming forward but i know that he's got all the all the tools to do that so uh, yeah we'll be seeing um, we'll be seeing uh, seeing how it works out but yeah it's exciting yeah uh, so when we were poking around in the, in the shed there earlier, Chris, we saw an interesting piece of kit that we've not seen close up before from uh, Toro and STRI. Um, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so this is a precision sense machine. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a machine that um, STR and Toro work closely together with, uh, as I understand, and that uh, we, we used that for the first time last year, where we used it over the whole track to measure, um, it measured levels of compaction, it measured soil moisture levels, it took pictures of, uh, to, 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 to measure sort of sward density, um, to pH, um, and uh, so that was used in May last year and it's, uh, we're planning on using it again annually really just to try and see if we can improve consistency in certain areas um, and to get us a general idea of how the track is performing each year and if there's anything that we might need to look at in more detail. Obviously it's quite a large area race course, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's a useful tool. It, it is a time consuming uh, and, and expensive, and not, not cheap kind of uh, process, but, uh, but you know, it gives us much more detail and um, data that, that may be useful for, for us managing the, managing the racing surface going forward. So that'd be the second year you've done it, so it'd be really interesting to see how things have progressed. And I guess you sent yourself some objectives based on the findings last year and whether yeah. you've met those. Well, we, yeah, we did, yeah. We, uh, we, uh, we have since then vertigo drained other areas of the course uh, and tried to address compaction in the, in the areas that highlighted uh, where, the, where we had more compaction, where the sort of surface was drier uh, and you know, possibly weaker as well. Um, and we shall see if they're more consistent this year. But to be honest, it didn't throw up anything that was alarming to us, which was good news. Okay. Talk about objectives, and I guess investment is part of your objective to, to invest wisely. If you've got one thing that's been the best investment that you've, you've had here, and I know you've mentioned to me that you know, your team and your people are, are part of that, but I want to talk about kit in particular or products. What would you say currently today would be your view on the best investment you've made? We use our vertigo drains a lot, to be honest, and that you know that that's probably the best investment. I mean, we, we find that it's an extremely useful tool. Last week we were using them with the pencil tines on because the kind of conditions were right to encourage some 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 root growth. Very often, however, we use them with the larger tines, and that's you know just it, it helps you. It helps us repair ground after racing. It uh, it helps with root growth. It helps with managing how firm the, the soil is uh, anyway, so you can sort of soften it by by, by giving it some more heave. Uh, it helps with drainage in the winter by poking holes in it, and, and uh, sure. uh, so we, yeah, we find it a very useful piece of kit. And I guess compaction must be a big challenge here with the amount of you know heavy horses that you got running across this. Well, of course, that's you know the, I mean that's what a vertical drain is essentially for, and, yeah. you know, but. You know, yes. So compaction is is it, we vertigo drain a lot here. So um, so uh, you know we don't tend to suffer from compaction because of the amount of times we do it. But without the vertigo drain, yeah, we would you would get compaction issues. Yes. Chris, if we can look at the future now, and what would you like to be happening with the turf facilities here in the next few years? I think managing power is always a bit of a challenge for us. Uh, managing power, managing thatch. Um, you know, we're constantly kind of trying to improve that and look at the ways. I mean, you know, having a ryegrass sword is, a, is 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 really ideal for us. That would be, uh, you know, that's quick recovering. You know, the, you you get decent root growth. So, uh, you know, we're always looking at that, trying to improve that, and uh, and uh, but uh, you know, things things have progressed nicely in the last couple of years, and uh, you know, we hope that we continue with that. With that, with that, with that, going in that way. That's great. Well, we'll get back to getting ready for a, a big meeting. Thanks very I think much. A few weeks, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you in the future. Thanks, Chris.